Island, Bay of Lord, Dallas, <laughs> uh, just, just how would you describe what happened yesterday offensively? And that seemed to, I mean, there didn't seem to be many indicators leading up to that type of performance based on what you put on. Okay. Yeah, yeah, obviously really poor, poor performance for us. Uh, you know, really didn't create any momentum or rhythm in the game. And so, uh, you know, tons of three and outs, uh, very abnormal for us. And, uh, you know, something certainly you got to watch, you got to evaluate it, uh, recognize things that can come up again. And, uh, you know, obviously simply we just got to play better, game plan better, uh, call it better, um, you know, bottom line. Is it, is it easier to move on from those sometimes where there appear to be so out of the blue versus <laughs> kind of trending in that direction? I don't think you ever want to just ignore anything because uh, this league's obviously on trends and copycat. And if you have an issue, the issue is going to come up again next week. And so uh, we got to find solutions to those different things that pop up throughout the season. And that's you know week one all the way to all the way to now. You have different things that come up, and so uh, it's navigating all those different things. Uh, you know, we're in the spot where we're at, where uh, it is what it is, and now we're on to the next phase. A couple of things. Uh... Was it a play to win game plan or were you holding things back, you know, for the playoffs that you didn't want to show? No, certainly certainly we went into went in to win it. Um, yeah. I mean it's the next cute and didn't call it well. Uh, how do you explain Dak's performance and, and you know, this was clearly his worst performance of his he maybe one of the worst performances of his career? Yeah, I, th I think again it's just uh, a lack of rhythm for all of us and uh, you know Talk about third downs, obviously not not efficient there at all. But you know, first and second down, and, and when you're sitting in third and seven plus, very much most of the game, uh, those are hard hard to defend. They're number one, uh, Washington's number one in third downs, and if you're going to sit in third and seven plus against those guys with the front and the coverage that they play, uh, it's going to be a challenge. And so, uh, you know, I think we we all just simply didn't execute, uh, didn't handle the uh, the situations well enough, and uh, you know, didn't find the rhythm. But the decision making, I mean, there were. He talked about he was greedy, throwing the deep pass at the time, the interceptions. I mean, I don't know. Was he pressing? Yeah, so certainly. Hey, I think all of us, when, when you're in a game like that and you're trying to find rhythm, you're trying to make plays that uh, create that momentum, I think it's natural for all of us to go through that. And certainly Dak probably went through that as that game went on. And uh, yeah, I, th I think everyone felt that. You know, everyone's trying to find a way to spark the offense, spark the team. And, uh, you know, Dak, myself, with you know how you're calling it, everyone, everyone's trying to find something to get us going, and we just weren't able to. Michael Gelkin, Dallas Morning News. When the pack, when the running game is not there, and the quarterback is for whatever reason, not just him, the passing game just isn't going. As a coordinator, play caller, what can you do to jumpstart it? Like, how do you find the rhythm when their seemingly is not? Yeah, I thought the one time we found rhythm was in the two minute, obviously before half, where our guys just started playing a little bit faster and playing playing with some tempo and and playing in a two minute drive. And I thought that was that that certainly felt good going into halftime that we can kind of build off of that. And you know, we we had the hold immediately, start the third quarter and and uh, had another three and out at that point. And so, uh, you know, we get we got to find a way to just be efficient on first and second down. Uh, you know, the run game it doesn't have to be twenty yard runs; it just has to be efficient and. Uh, and allow allow the pass game to be, you know, completions and find find different opportunities that you can go there. And we're still going to have shot opportunities, but I think you got to have that blend of uh, being playing really clean, efficient football in first and second down. Is it two straight games where you guys have not been efficient uh, yeah. or near near it on a, as a run game yeah. and early downs as well. Like One point four yards per carry with Steve and Tony. What is the underlying issue in your view beyond the point of playing good fronts, but What's 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 happening here? Yeah, yeah, certain, certainly. Uh, yeah, we've we've played some some good fronts, but at the end of the day, uh, we got to find a way to to get it going. And uh, you know whether it's you know the structure in which the defense are playing or just simply our, our side of it, we got to find solutions. And uh, we got to find solutions and in, in however we need to mixing up personnel, mixing up the presentations of them, whatever it may be. Uh, Finding what we're going to hang our hat on as we go into this thing, because there's been moments that during the season we, we've had it, and uh, you know the last few weeks for whatever reason, you know it's it's decreased, and hopefully create a little rhythm with the with the offensive line, and hopefully you can get Tyler back and kind of create that continuity there and get those guys going. Calvin Watkins, Dallas Morning News. Has it been difficult for Noah and, and Gal to find a level of consistency in the last couple of weeks? 
Certainly, their numbers are uh, are numbers that you know they've done so much good for us this year. And the last couple of weeks, we've just had uh, you know CDs had some production, and we just haven't found as much production outside of that. And uh, you know th those guys are still you know key contributors. They're, they're part of this thing. You look at it at a wider lens; they've contributed in so many good ways. And so uh, we just got we got to find find their spot, find their opportunities, and let them take advantage of them. The tight ends. Outside of shows, you still got some young guys there. Was it just some of the growing pains at times with them that you will see. It's a little bit of inconsistency with those guys. Yeah, certainly we got some younger guys that, uh, you know, Jake, Peyton, Sean, uh, you know, they all have different roles on our team. We certainly like utilizing those guys. And again, uh, kind of every, everyone's got a little piece of, piece of the thing, a little bit of an opportunity to clean it up. And, you know, we, we've had plenty of production at various times. We, we had two weeks where, you know, the run game was inefficient, and uh, you know the other stuff was just a little bit choppy. And so, uh, you know, look back on you know find that momentum, find that rhythm that we've carried at various other times. Kellen Jory of Sinai Sports, you hope to get Tyler back this week. You know you're not getting Terrence back. Where's the offensive line, and particularly the run block blocking relative to what you needed? And do you think you have your best personnel grouping among those healthy? Yeah, cer certainly. Uh, you know, Tyler gets back. Obviously, we can create a little bit of continuity. Uh, you know, he's. A center, a center runs the show in many ways up there, and so uh, you know we'd be really, really excited to have Tyler back. And and again, those guys uh, just create some consistency with those guys. I think is huge. And uh, you know, ultimately, ultimately, we just gotta gotta clean up the run game and get it going, and uh, we'll find a way. And I know in an ideal world you don't have interceptions, but given how many you've had, how much time do y'all spend on what everyone else around uh, Dak should do if there is an interception? I mean, trying to prevent some of the pick sixes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, ultimately, the Washington one is going to be irrelevant. What anyone else did, uh, he 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 had it from the right there. Uh, but certainly, it's things we talk about. I mean, that's that's just basic football stuff that comes up across the league that you're always talking about on both sides of the ball. Uh, you know, defense playing offense at times, offense playing defense at times, because uh, those things do come up. And so, uh, certainly, there are things that you talk about in the off season, throughout the season, when different things come up across the league, and and you, you just talk about all this situational football that you can be aware of. Tyler Jay's what was Dak like today when you guys met? Oh, um, he was good. He was good. Um, you know, obviously we all get to watch an, an ugly film and uh, you know take take a piece of it, and uh, and then the beauty of this thing is you got to move on. And uh, you know, throughout the season we've had a few losses, and I think our guys have responded really well. You know, we, we've we've handled these uh, adverse moments uh, well and responded well the next game, and so. Uh, I feel like our guys are in a good place. You know, they, everyone's got to, you know, kind of eat it and take it this uh, today, and you, know, you got to go through that process and then get ready. How ready is he for playoff football? Yeah, certainly. I, I think we're uh, we're going to go for it, and uh, I'm excited for uh, the opportunities that our guys have because uh, you know, again, there's been plenty of good football. Uh, there's been plenty of good football. Uh, yesterday was really, really poor, obviously for all of us, and so evaluate it, clean it up, and uh, move on. Dave Blockenberg, Cowboys Radio Network. Um, so, Kellen, obviously, Tampa was feels like last year, but obviously, the first game of the year. How much have they changed schematically? And I know you're just kind of jumping in now, but yeah, just jumping into that. Uh, you know, they're a really talented defense, a veteran defense. So certainly, there's a lot of stuff that they've hung their hat on for a long time down there, and they've done a tremendous job. Uh, you know, the linebackers are the, the combination are as good in the league as you're going to find. Uh, you know, the front certainly is big, stout, uh, creates pressure. The back end does a really good job of playing vision on the quarterback and seeing coverages and pattern matching. And so, uh, you know, we've played these guys a few times now, and, and they're really, really talented. And the, the speed at their linebacker position, is that more problematic in the run game or the pass game? I think certainly they use it to their advantage in both. Uh, you know, their ability to play over the top in the run game, but they also, you know, they have a really good pressure plan. And they allow those backers because of their speed to be able to get out to coverage areas you're traditionally not anticipating linebackers to get to, just because those guys are really, really good at it. And so, uh, you know, it's it's a big challenge. You undercut a lot of your guys' routes week one with those linebackers. Do you feel like? I don't, know, we're going to start, I don't want to go too deep into game plan, but do you feel like you guys are, are, are ready for that sort of a thing? Should that? Go? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Certainly they played, they played uh, tighter and more aggressive that first game. And so, uh, you know, we didn't, we didn't play necessarily our best that, that day. And they were able to play low and on top of everything. And so, uh, yeah, some, some will be aware of. And Tyron, he, whatever you guys asked of him, he was going to do to help the team. 
and you guys have asked a lot of them to, after missing 13 games, to be the right tackle mm -hmm. where everything's flipped. Mm -hmm. How do you feel in the run game in particular that's coming and do you, do you feel like maybe you guys might even be asking too much of someone to make that radical switch given the long layoff? Well, I think, I think no matter what the situation was, a layoff is going to create a layoff uh, you know, situation, I mean, whether it went to left or right. Uh, he's played some right in his past, and so uh, you know, certainly we felt like it was it was a really good situation for the team. I, th I think he's handled it well. Uh, you know, certainly by no means is it perfect for any of us, but uh, you know, I, I feel like as as we keep building with Zach and him over there, you know, that does give us a really really solid right side there, and we just got to create some create some uh, you know consistent with consistency with those guys, particularly in the run game. Kellen Dak talked toward the end of last season about how he didn't feel like his footwork stayed as clean at the end of the year as it was at the beginning. Um, what's the key to having his footwork clean this late in the year, and how does that change, or what do you have to be even more att attentive to if the pressure is coming more quickly? Yeah, I, th I think it's something you just got to be really conscious of because uh, it's very natural for a quarterback to, you know, your feet start moving moving a number of times when you feel like you gotta you gotta make movements or or get out of there. Uh, there's a trust factor to it, and then there's just simply a consistency and an awareness to it. And I think Dak's certainly there uh, in that space as far as knowing that you know this is this is critical to to my success on offense and uh, and being able to throw the football. Scholar, do you have anything? Are you good, Tom? Uh, I, I don't know what the football equivalent of this is, but in basketball, your coaches when you're down 20, hey, there's no 20 point play, you can hit in one possession and tie the game up. With Dak's experience, and he's played so much, that is it surprising that he's still trying to hit that big shot, trying to and, and when it's not, when it might not be there. I certainly feel like uh, all of us still go through that phase. Uh, again, it's trying to create momentum, to create some some a spark of some kind, and so uh, certainly we we, we got to be got to be smart. And I think uh, you know teams at times are going to make you go the long way, particularly when. They're they're in an uh, advantage situation, you know, up by multiple scores, and so sometimes, hey, you just got to chip away at it. You got to get a bunch of completions, and that's something we just got to, you know, keep leaning on patience there. Is that more important even in playoff football? Is there what did you learn from last year's game at in San Francisco that was different than a regular season game? Yeah, cer certainly the, uh, you know, ag again uh, the playoff game. Obviously, everyone knows the playoff game has has certain level of intensity and, and excitement associated with it, and so. Uh, last year, we kind of started slow. I think that's that's one big thing is you know you got to start these games fast and just just clean football. And, and we started very slow against San Francisco, and um, you know something we're we're able to hopefully learn from and grow from and and put ourselves in better position moving forward. Dan spoke to us about using the final few weeks and Sunday among those as an opportunity to just tweak his personnel usage, tweak his schemes to just to learn more about guys and how they respond to different opportunities. Did you do anything similar like that, or is it more just to get a pretty good feel for what you guys could handle, you know, just win the game? Yeah, I mean, there's always little things that you're, this time of year, I mean, yeah, Dan spoke about it. I mean, there's little things that you're going to kind of mess around with or, or maybe uh, view as, as playoff worthy that, that maybe is, uh, is going to be available to us this week. And so you're always going through that process, uh, you know, this time of year. Coming off the playoff game last year, we were asking you about you know the, the usage numbers for, for Pollard and Lamb, and you, you've incorporated them into the offense in a, in a much more significant percentage this year. How much how much did that grow out of that game, and, and how much how many more packages are they involved in now, basically, or the thrust than, than it was at this time last year? Yeah, certainly those guys are uh, you know your best players are as far as the guys that you want to get the ball in their hands and allow them to, to make plays. I think that's, that's something certainly last year, just being more conscious of it. Um, you know, making sure those guys get their touches, their opportunities. Uh, Tony is such a good space player and, and CD, you know, even, even on Sunday watching him run after catch, you know, he catches some balls and makes plays and his, uh, his physicality once he gets the ball in his hands is, is tremendous. And so, those guys are always guys. We're trying to make sure we give them opportunities, give them touches, create opportunities for them uh, by whether it's a formation or a particular play. And so, um, you know, certainly we've got a number of those guys we'd like to get contributing.